Hi there kids, this is Teacher Love and let me take you on a journey that will help you understand the real world through science. The surface of the Earth is a product of physical and chemical changes, whether it's man-made or caused by nature. These changes have important roles in our day-to-day -day activities. In this episode of DepEd TV, you will learn how changes in matter affect the environment. But before we go to that discussion, let's first use science to explain the physical and chemical changes that occur in all matter. Let's break it down. Matter undergoes two changes physical change, and chemical change. When matter changes in form but its substance remains the same, we say it undergoes physical change. To demonstrate, I have here some ice cream, a perfect snack for this hot, sunny weather. But remember kids, we must eat this right away. Why? Because it may turn from this to this. Notice how this ice cream changes its appearance as time goes by. In science, we call this melting. Melting is an example of physical change. Physical changes happen when matter changes its state, like what happened to our ice cream. From solid, it turned into liquid. Although it changes its state, it's still the same ice cream with the same flavor. Mmm, yum! Here's another one. By cutting and sewing this wood, we produce a physical change. When we saw the wood, it produces sawdust. Though it changed its size, sawdust is still wood. Changes in size, shape, or state of matter are all evidence of physical change. Physical changes in matter result in things that are useful to us people and to our environment. For example, this simple piece of wood can be used to make beautiful furniture. Wood can be used to make frames, cabinets, and chairs that you might be using right now. So, those are physical changes. In chemical change, the composition of the original material is rearranged to form a new substance. Hence, you can no longer identify the original material. Let's observe an example of chemical change. Observe kids, but remember, do not try this at home. When we observe a lit match, we see that the match burns. And as it burns, it changes into burned wood and ash. We cannot change this ash back into a match. So burning is an example of chemical change that cannot be undone. Some chemical changes occur in our food. When making a toast, intense heat causes the bread to burn, which means chemical change has occurred. Spoiled food? Chemical change Chemical changes are useful at home and in many industries, like in making our favorite cheese or even our favorite bread. It is also the kind of change that happens in manufacturing companies that produce plastics, detergents, and other products. Once again, physical change is a change in the appearance of a material. There is no new substance formed and the composition of the substance is still the same. Chemical change is a change where there is a new substance formed, where there are changes in the composition of the material. Now, let's try to apply what you have learned. In this activity, you will observe a number of situations that involves changes that matter can undergo. Identify whether it's a physical or chemical change. Boiling of water 
Is boiling of water a physical or chemical change? The answer, physical change. Boiling water creates the process of evaporation where a liquid turns into gas. What about rusting iron fences? If you answered chemical change, you are correct. Rusting causes a change in the chemical composition of a certain material. Let's look at the next one. Firewood as a fuel. The answer, chemical change. Firewood when burned is changed into a new substance forming charcoal. Here's another one. Pounding of garlic. If you answered physical change, correct! Although the garlic may change its size and shape, it doesn't lose its identity. It's still a garlic. And the last one is the ripening of fruits. What is your answer? You're right! It's chemical change. When fruit ripens, it changes its color and taste. Changes in color and taste of a fruit are evidence that a chemical change has taken place. That was an easy one. Good job! The physical and chemical changes that materials undergo have important roles in our day-to-day -day activities. As time goes on, Many more chemicals are applied by science and technology to make people's lives easier and more comfortable. We now have televisions, computers, laptops, and cell phones that you might be using while watching me right now. We have huge, tall, and modern buildings in the cities all over the Philippines. We also have more air-conditioned vehicles now. The big shopping malls offer a place of convenience and a variety of products which are durable, affordable, and useful. Amazing, right? However, as more modern facilities are built and more products are made through industrialization, it brings about changes that affect our planet, our Earth. We are now facing huge changes in our land, air, and water. And some of these changes have resulted in pollution, destruction of habitat, and loss of lives, all negative effects brought about by these changes. What has caused all these changes? To put it in simply, it's us, humans. Humans are the biggest contributors to the changes that cause these problems. How? By the improper disposal of garbage that have harmful chemicals and human waste that can pollute our air, land, and water. Burning of garbage materials that release dangerous toxic chemicals that contribute to the greenhouse effect and global warming. Smoked from the burning of oil, coal, and wood, which can also cause air pollution. Cutting down of trees that is also harmful to our environment. It affects the quality of air that we breathe. It causes rapid change in temperature, which in turn changes the world's weather patterns, which leads to environmental concerns. Dumping of garbage everywhere. When garbage is thrown everywhere, the land becomes polluted. The polluted land now becomes the breeding places for pests that carries germs that are dangerous to human health. Though humans are partly to blame for these problems, I'm here to tell you not to panic. Just keep calm because some of us are working on solutions to fix the problems that these changes have caused.
Just like what happened to Manila Bay, the efforts of hundreds of volunteers from different places caused the changes that we see now. Although we still have a long way to go in achieving the full rehabilitation of Manila Bay, at least we are already seeing some results. Hey humans, keep up the good work! I know what you're thinking. You want to help too, right? Here are the things you can do as a kid in minimizing the harmful effects of changes in the environment. Number one, plant trees in the backyard. Make it a habit to improve your surroundings by simply planting trees and green plants in it. Trees provide food and oxygen. They help save energy, clean the air, and help fight climate change. Number two, do not throw your garbage just anywhere. Proper waste disposal help prevents water and land pollution. Improper waste disposal is the primary cause of water pollution. That is why some children or even adults suffer from diarrhea and other stomach troubles. And lastly, learn and be aware. We must find out what practices we do every day that can cause harm to us and to our environment so that we can avoid them. We must do our share in maintaining a healthy environment. No matter how big or small your contribution is, what matters most is you've made a difference for your environment. For your final task for today, answer the following questions carefully. These questions focus on explaining how changes in matter affect the environment. Choose the letter of the best answer. Number 1. The following are effects on the environment brought about by the changes in matter. Which of these has a good effect on the environment? A. Air pollution B. Composting C. Deforestation or D. Water pollution The correct answer, letter B, composting. Composting is a form of waste disposal where organic waste decomposes naturally. Number 2. The following activities can be done to candy wrappers. Which of these can help protect the save the environment? A. Throw garbage into the river. B. Scatter candy wrappers in the backyard. C. Cut out candy wrappers to make pillows. Or D. Burn candy wrappers because these are biodegradable waste. The correct answer, letter C. Cut out candy wrappers to make pillows. Candy wrappers turned into pillows is a good example of recycling. Good job, kids! Number 3. The following activities cause a change in matter. Which of these has bad effect on the environment? A. Slicing fruits B. Sewing clothes C. Peeling vegetables D. Breaking empty bottles of soda The correct answer, letter D. Breaking empty bottles of soda Broken glasses can cause harm and injury. Number 4. Water pollution is one of the bad effects on the environment brought about by the changes in matter. Which of the following can minimize the bad effects on our bodies of water? A. Oil spills from the cargo ship. B. Bringing trash bins when having a picnic at the beach. C. Throwing detergent and other chemicals in the river. Or D, 
using bath soap and shampoo while swimming at the beach. The correct answer, letter B, bringing trash bins when having a picnic at the beach. Improper waste disposal is the primary cause of water contamination, and bringing our trash bins can help minimize that. Number 5. Typhoon Ondoy caused landslides and massive flooding. Which of the following should we do to prevent these things from happening again? A. Convert forests into residential areas. B. Throw garbage anywhere you want to. C. Plant more trees in our surroundings. Or D. Cut more trees to build more things at home. The correct answer, letter C. Plant more trees in our surroundings because trees helps keep soil in place and their roots soak up water. Good job, kids! Changes in matter can be beneficial or harmful to living things and the environment. Knowing the physical and chemical changes that materials undergo helps us determine the best way to manage materials and minimize waste. Everything on this earth changes. Let us be wise so we can decide which ones are helpful and which ones destructive. Let us choose to do only those that are beneficial and choose to act together to lessen the impact of harmful changes on our planet Earth. By saving planet Earth, you save your life and ensure the lives of future generations. Once again, this is Teacher Love. Join me again next time for another fun and meaningful way of learning Science 5. Only here on Dep and TV, where learning science makes sense. Thank you.